Natural Sciences. I'm still your host. And those are my Twitter and Instagram handles. Uh, by the end of this lesson, grade nines, this is what you're going to learn today. Remember yesterday we started a new um, topic. Yesterday we started a new topic and um, it, which is force. So we already know what is a force and then everything. So today we are looking at, uh, by the end of this lesson, you will know more about contact forces. So you're gonna know about friction. You're gonna know about um, tension. You're also going to know about comprehension when we, uh, when we compress something. So um, what's going to happen is if time allows, we are going to look at field forces. So grade nine, yesterday I gave you a homework. Yesterday I gave you a homework. Um, let me see if any one of you did it. So yesterday we said a force that tries to slow things down when two things rub each other. What do we call it? So the frictional force. Um, I'm going to work by myself for now. The frictional force, you can mark your work. If you've got any question or you've got a different answer, you are allowed to open your mic and ask a question. I'm hoping everyone got a frictional force. So we call a force that uh, a force that tries to slow things down. We say when two things rub each other, when you're rubbing each other, we say it's a frictional force. A force from water, a force from water that pushes things up. Why would, uh, what is that? A force from water that pushes things up. What do we call it? So a force from water that pushes things up, we call it an up thrust force. It's an up thrust force. Up thrust force. I'm hoping you are, mark you are marking your work. It's an up thrust force. So it pushes things up. I made an example yesterday that when you put a soccer ball or a tennis ball uh, in water, and then uh, you try to push it down, it will always come up. So that type of force, it is called an up thrust force. So for C, a force that tries to slow things uh, that are moving through air, what do we call it? A force that slow things that are moving through air. So we already know that whatever force that tries to slow things down, we call it a friction. But what type of uh, force is this one? It's a friction drag. We call it a friction drag. So we get a friction drag from the air. Force that objects to slow down as they move through fluids such as air or water. So from air or water, we can still get a friction drag. So um, I hope you are marking your work and taking notes. A force that tries to slow things down uh, uh, from moving through air, we call it a frictional drag. So when we say something is not moving, when we're talking about things that are not moving, we say they are stationary. Stationary, grade nine, stationary. It is not moving, so it is stationed. It is stationary. It is stationary. I'm hoping that you are all following our, what to call, our corrections from yesterday's homework. A force, that tries to slow things down when two things rub each other, it's a frictional force. So it's, we, we did discuss yesterday that forces work in pairs. So now if something is going forward and the other one is dragging that thing for, uh, from going forward, we say that it's experiencing uh, uh, what you call a frictional force. Look at your hands, rub them together. And then when you're rubbing your hands together, you are going to feel a frictional force there. And then when you try to push something like let's say a soccer ball in water, you're trying to put it, we push it down and then it comes up. We say it is experiencing an up thrust force, a force that tries to slow things down uh, that are moving through air, it's a friction drag. And then if something is not moving, when we are under this section of forces, we say it is stationary. I'm hoping I'm clear grade nines. 
let us move on. When two forces working in opposite directions are not uh, the same strength, what do we call it? When two forces working in opposite directions are not the same strength, and then we say those are unbalanced forces. We have done this. Unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces. I'm hoping everyone is on the same uh, page with me. Those are unbalanced forces. Then the unit of force, uh, uh, the unit of force, everybody knows by now that the unit of force is Newton. It's a Newton. And then we, how do we represent it? We represent it by an uppercase N, an uppercase N. It's a Newton. So from Sir Isaac Newton, I explained yesterday. And then a push or a pull, what is it? A push or a pull, it's a force. We said we discuss, uh, we, we define force as a push or a pull yesterday. Remember from yesterday's note? Yes. yes sir. So we have that. A force which pulls you down, what is it? A force that pulls you down is known as a gravity. gravity. Gravitational force. Yes, it is gravity. Gravitational force. Thank you very much, grade nines. Gravitational force. It's a gravitational force. Force of gravity. You can call it a force of gravity. Let me put a stroke there, say a force of gravity, because I also enjoy calling it a force of gravity. Force of gravity is the one that makes us to not fly. <laughs> force of gravity, force of gravity, force of gravity. Then we're also looking at explain F equals to MA. They said um, you must explain where symbols have their usual meaning. So we all know that F is equal to a force. So we can say force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration acceleration i'm going to explain this great nine it is so interesting today you are going i know you love calculating you love balancing that's why you're doing natural sciences and you know what it's what i love as well so now this formula great nine don't ever forget it when it comes to forces so now we say if an object is given they will say to you what is the force of um an object that has a mass of 20 kilograms and is moving at um let's say two meters two minutes per second so you've got that then you will say that mass multiplied by that acceleration and then which is a velocity and then you say it is equals to so mass times acceleration gives us a uh, newtons eight nines don't forget that you will see as we continue i've got a nice planned classwork for you so Sir, yes what if they give you force and mass and then you have to calculate the acceleration amount we're going to do that Unkabitzi. we're gonna do that it's so it's going to be interesting because sometimes they will give you force and acceleration you have to find mass and then uh sometimes you are given as you said you are given um you are given uh what you call force and uh, mass, you need to find acceleration. So it, it will go back to your mathematics principles where you're going to divide and uh, multiply and subtract and all those uh, things. It's going to be an interesting uh, subject. Don't worry. Great nines. Then they say to you, uh, define um, contact force. So we said uh, contact force is a force that, force that, um, is exerted or is applied is exerted as a science student or as a science learner i want you to use exerted but if you forget exerted in an exam uh, you can use applied is a force that is exerted or applied when two objects when two objects when two objects touch each other touch each other there we go. 
So I hope grade nines, you are familiar with our, uh, our language now. Remember, for the past weeks, we've been doing chemistry and you know, you, you, you were used to that uh, language. Now we are here with a new language. So these things are important grade nines when you are writing your test again. Remember that you can also uh, get this in your exam or your test or your cycle test. It depends on how your school is going to actually uh, examine you or yes, examine you. So these are, are very important. That's why I always introduce you with these uh, scientific terms because I will give you a, a statement and say, um, give the correct scientific term that's how the, most of the teachers uh, will obviously ask questions so you need to know when two forces working in opposite directions are not the same strength those are unbalanced forces the unit of force it's newton a push or a pull it's a force a force which pulls you down force of gravity or gravitational force and then when they say explain f is equals to m multiplied by a it's equals to force multiplied by mass and acceleration. So we are just going to do those calculations as we continue with our lesson today. And then when you're saying um, force that is exerted when two objects touch each other, that is a contact force. So when there is attachment, when there is touch, we can get um, contact force and there is friction. We already know that when we're talking about contact forces, we talk about friction because there is always friction. When two hands are touching each other and then they're rubbing each other, we are experiencing friction. How are you aware that you are experiencing friction? Because your hands are getting warmer, then uh, you will know that you are experiencing friction. Let me see uh, what else can we do now? Grade nines, um, let's continue. Mm. So let us uh, look at contact forces, grade nine. Take notes now, take notes, listen carefully. I've explained to you uh, 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 through the homework, but now let us get into, de into depth. Okay, what is a contact force? A contact force is exacted when two objects are in contact. So they touch each other. As I've been making example with my hands, then when two hands, when both my hands are coming together, we are uh, saying that's a contact force because I push them together. Then uh, a friction is a contact for it is a contact force that's a, a surface exerts on an object. So both surfaces are exerting on each on the both hands. And then uh, when you're rubbing them together, I've explained the concept of friction. But let us look at an example of a ball. So when you take a ball that rolls along the ground, pushing it uh, 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 along the carpet there or along the kitchen floor, then uh, the ground will slow down and stop after a while. You all, you all know that uh, if you kick your ball, it will not uh, go forever. It will obviously at some point need to stop. Why does it stop? It is because of friction. So the level of friction is not the same uh, in, the, uh, in different su uh, surfaces. We need to look at that as well. What type of a surface are we talking about? And then the type of a surface will obviously uh, show us different um, amount of friction. This happens because of friction. The surface of the ground rubs against the surface of the ball. The frictional force always acts parallel to the surface. The frictional force always acts parallel to the surface. And then um, when it is also acts in the opposite direction, friction is not always are uh, going to uh, to the same direction they will never go to the same direction as much as they are parallel but they are going uh, in an opposite direction and then we experience friction grade nines am i uh, uh, clear so now you know the concept of contact force and you know once things come into contact they are going to experience friction and we always that uh, you know what we know about friction we know that friction acts in an opposite direction and it is always parallel so the surfaces are parallel to each other and they are going to uh, in opposite direction 
uh, uh, a great night. Don't forget that. Then um, friction can prevent an object from moving. So the main purpose of uh, friction, it is to actually uh, stop an object from moving. When an object is moving, we are going to have a friction. And we already know that we've got types of friction. Uh, we spoke of frictional drag when things are, open, uh, are, 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 are moving through a, a fluid. It's either water or air. We have an, a frictional drag. Have you ever tried walking um, inside your swimming pool and then you feel water as if it's obviously opposing you not to go forward that is a frictional drag and then the blades most of the time in the aeroplanes when they are on, in the air then they also experience a frictional drag and then they say if you push against a heavy box that is standing on grass the grass exerts a frictional force against you pushing uh, force against your pushing force. So you're trying to push this thing, uh, this box to, uh, uh, forward, and then you are experiencing resistance. That is because of the friction uh, of the grass uh, in uh, to the box. So remember, we said friction is opposite grade nine. And then, if your pushing force is smaller than the frictional force, the box will not move. So we all know that we need power to push things. So if you don't have much of force, if you don't have much of the power, you won't actually. We have experienced this. I'm sure most of you are in grade nine. You have seen someone got stuck with a car, and then uh, alone he tries to push the car, but the car won't move. And then he asked for help to increase the force now to be applied in the car so that the friction now is obviously a lesser than the force that is applied on the car. That's why we need more people to, uh, to push the car. So friction sometimes produces heat. We need to know that as rub your hands against each other, oh yes, you're getting warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. Yes, uh, your hands are getting warmer. It's because of friction grade nine. Then let us look at tension. Let us look at tension. We all know everything friction now. We all know everything friction. Let us now look at everything tension. Everything tension now with nine. What is tension? So a tension is also a type of contact force. So I will say to you uh, in our text or in our long homework for a long week or for a weekend, and I say to you, um, state three types of force of contact forces. Great nine. Three types of contact forces are as follows: is friction tension and compression when you compress something compression compression it's compression it's compression so it's friction tension compression you need to know those those are types of uh, contact forces so a tension is a contact force in a rope or cable when it is used to carry load so how is this let us look at the example of the car again if my car or your car breaks down a tow truck is used to pull um to pull to a garage a cable is attached to the car to pull it so not the ones that you know the ones that are very sophisticated but even those ones if they are still pulling it up to be carried in uh, on top of the truck uh what do you do they use a rope to actually roll it to there's a tension there uh, you, you know the tension between a, a, on the rope when the the front car is pulling the back car, so there will be a tension there. You know, um, so you know uh, what is tension now. If a car breaks down, and then I've read that example there. What else can we look at now? If you hang something on a rope from ceiling, for example. Tension is created in the rope. So, you know, if you are hanging, you know, 
there's always a tension looking at your house's chandeliers, if there's a chandelier there, or at your school you are making some concert and then you want to put some decoration on the ceiling and then you use a rope there, there will be a tension on that rope. If the object is too heavy, the tension in the rope will be too much and the rope will break. So why we, when you are hanging something uh, to hang down and then uh, it is heavy, obviously the ceiling will come down as well. And then that is because of the tension. Sometimes materials stretch if the tension in them increases. If you apply enough force to an elastic band, you all know the elastic band, the tension in the elastic band will make it uh, stretch. You know, when you go to chicken licking and then they normally put that uh, elastic band uh, around your meal. And then the more you pull it, you're stretching it, the elastic band stretches it wider until sometimes it breaks because of the tension that it is experiencing. So that's, those are the effects of the, of the tension. Uh, let us do this uh, classwork grade nines now. It's a classwork for tension to see if you are following grade nines. So when a bed is flying, it is experience, it experiences a sliding friction. Is it true or false? When a bed is uh, flying, it experiences a sliding friction. Have I spoken anything about sliding friction? No. So the correct answer there is false. false. It, which friction is the spade uh, experiencing? Which friction, uh, when the blade is flying, it experiences a sliding friction, true or false? We said it's false. So what type of friction is the blade experiencing? So I've explained that uh, when, um, an object is uh, moving uh, in, uh, in a fluid, be it water or air, then we say it is experiencing a frictional drag, a friction drag. Remember that, a bed experience friction drag. So that friction drag is a friction experienced in the air and in water. Friction drag is a, a, a friction that is experienced in the air or in water. If the net force on an object is zero, the object has what? Has a reaction force, action force, balance force, or unbalanced forces. If the net force on an object is zero, the object has reaction forces, action forces, balanced forces, unbalanced forces. What is the correct answer there? So the correct answer is, if the net force on an object is zero, remember yesterday when I made an example of you pushing against your classroom wall, we said there won't be any movement. So there is no action. So then that means the net force is zero. Then that means the forces are balanced. So the correct answer is balanced forces. There are balanced forces, grade nines. If the net force is zero, if, it, if the net force of an object is zero, the object has balanced forces, has balanced forces. Any questions, grade nine? I'm sure I'm clear. You all understand this one. Let us look at this one. Which of the following exerts the strongest gravitational force on you? On you? The earth, the sun, the moon, the star. Which one? Which of the following exerts the strongest gravitational force on you? The earth, the sun, the moon, the star. The earth. The earth. We are all on earth. We don't know about. Uh, I, I think only on earth we can actually experience um, gravity, force of gravity. So the earth exerts the strongest gravitational force on you. I don't think there is any force on the sun there because it's too hot, so I don't know. 
And then on the moon, I believe we float because there is no gravity there. And then the stars, we all believe that the stars, sometimes when we see a shooting star, we say it, it, it is going to land down here because of the gravity as well. So I think that's why I'm saying the Earth will obviously have more of force of gravity. So there we go, grade nine, some calculations. I hope your pens and papers are ready. So you are moving the dresser that has a mass of 36 kg. You are moving the dresser that is obviously, um, has a mass of 36 kg. Its acceleration is 0 0.5 uh, meters per second second so now what you need to do now you say but then what do they say what is the force being applied we need to find out what is the amount of the force that you are applying so you say there is six multiplied by zero comma five then yes it's 18 newton 18 newtons yes because uh, you said F is equals to MA, and then you say 36 multiplied by 0, 0,5. And then your correct answer there is that 18 newtons, which symbol yeah. is it? Is D. The correct answer is G, grade 9. Did everyone get the same answer? Yes. I, I, thank you very much. So we're still going to have more calculations, grade 9. Just Brace yourselves. And then um, cars have difficulty stopping on ice because of uh, what type of friction do we get from ice grid nines? Is it rolling friction, sliding friction? What type of it? B. Sliding friction. Sliding. On um, of course you are back. <laughs> Friction. So the correct answer is sliding friction. We all know that we go to Northgate and Joburg for slides there, and then you experiencing sliding friction. Thank you very much, my kids. You are understanding this. You are understanding this. You are ready for grade ten. I'm going to talk to Angie that you all go to grade ten. Everybody in my class needs to go to grade 10 and choose physics and life sciences and become <laughs> doctors in the future. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> this force causes objects to wear out, create heat, opposes motion, and can be reduced with the, loop, the use of lubricants. You've got gravitational force, frictional force, frictional normal force. force, tensional force. Which one is it? Frictional force. Frictional Frictional force, yes. Frictional. Frictional. Yes. Frictional force. Oh, I see. I think most of people are enjoying the forces more than the chemistry. What's happening? What's going on? I was worried, thinking that you won't actually um enjoy this. So now you, s I've, I've given you a glimpse of how we can ask these frictional uh, 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 contact force questions. That was my aim when I gave you that last week. Then let us look at compression. So compression, compression can also push something into another space. So now we have dealt with, um, we have dealt with uh, friction, tension, and then now we are looking at compression. So we say uh, compression can also push something into another space. How so? Uh, when you squeeze toothpaste from, um, from a tube, you compress it. The minute you press your, 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 your toothpaste there, then you're applying a force, you are compressing that uh, tube there to actually push out uh, the toothpaste onto your toothbrush. That is compression. And then, uh, Let's figure uh, this one out together again. Which contact force is exerted in the action stated below? Only write whether it is friction, 
tension or compression. Uh, read all three. The force exerted in the string of the pits one around James James's neck. The force exerted in the string of beats one around James's neck, and James is late today. Bucks, I hope he's in the class, presses onto the plastic tomato sauce bottle to squeeze out the last bit of tomato sauce onto Cleopatra's fried chips. Ungabeti uses soccer boots when playing a soccer match to prevent hair from slipping and falling on the field. So, A, is it friction, tension, or compression? Tension. It's tension. Why? Because we saw the string there, the string there, the string. The minute you see a string there, we know that there is pulling there and there is tension once there is pulling. Bax presses onto the plastic tomato sauce bottle to squeeze out the last bit of tomato sauce onto Cleopatra's fried chips. Which one is this? Compression. 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 Thank you very much. It's compression here. Oh, this one you said it's tension. I forgot to write here. Yeah, tension. Mm -hmm. And then this one is compression because uh, Bax is compressing that bottle to actually squeeze out. Unkabiti uses soccer boots when playing a soccer match to prevent hair from slipping and falling on the field. Which one is this? Friction. Friction. Friction, friction this one. It's friction. So I'm hoping my grade nines are aware as to how these questions will come in their test and they need to see those hints there as to how to actually uh, address them. Uh, compression, you compress, you tensionize, you frictionize, you understand the nice everything here. We are happy, everybody is happy. So you understand here, no questions. Let us move forward, grade nines. We're here now. Remember, I want you to remember this. This is what I want you to take out of this lesson today. Contact forces are exerted when objects touch each other. Friction is exerted by a surface on an object. Tension exists in a rope or cable when it is used to carry load. Compression pushes or squeezes something into smaller spaces or another space. That's what you need to take out. Remember today we're doing contact forces and you understand them now. Grade nines, copy down the homework. Copy down the homework. Find the acceleration produced by a force of five newtons acting on a mass of 10 kg. Find the acceleration produced by a force on a five newtons uh, uh, acting on a mass of 10 kg. A girl weighing 25 kg stands on the floor. She exerts a downward force of 250 newtons on the floor. What force does the floor exert on her? A girl weighing 25 kg stands on the floor. She exerts a downward force of 250 newtons on the floor. What force does the floor exert on her? Name the physical quantity, which makes it easier to accelerate a small car than a large car. Name the physical quantity, which makes it easier to accelerate a small car than a large car. Can I move to the next slide, grade nine? Can I move to the next slide? Yes. yes. Um, find the acceleration produced by a force of five newtons on a mass of 10 kg. Find the acceleration produced by a force of five newtons acting on a mass of five kg, then, what is the force which produces an acceleration of one meters per second in a body 
in a body of mass one kg, what is the force? What we need the force be? We need the force be. So, in our next lesson, we are going to focus on the following grid lines. Gravitational force, weight, mass, and magnetic force. So, Portia, what's wrong, Portia? Open your mic, Portia, and talk to me. I see you um, raising your hand. Okay, so, hello. Um, please show the Sir? thingy. This previous slide. Please show the first part of the homework. The first part of the homework. Oh, okay. There we go. Find the acceleration produced by a force of five newtons acting on a mass of five kg, of 10 kg, I'm sorry. A girl weighing 25 kg stands on the floor. She exerts an, a downward force of 250 newtons on the floor. What force does the floor exert on her? You need to find out the force there. The name, name the physical quantity, which makes it easier to accelerate a small car than a large car. Name the physical quantity, which makes it easier. Galaxy Tab S3. Galaxy Tab S3, raise your hand. What's your question, Galaxy? Sir, um, I wanted to ask, is it possible for like two forces to be in a certain question? Yes. You just need to read that question very well. And it's actually my favorite question today. I want to see if you can think out of the box. Did you see that? Yes, sir. Yes. So just think out of the box and then, yeah. Please name your, 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 your device with your name now so that I can call you with your name. I don't want to call you Galaxy. Yes, I'm gonna. <laughs> yes. Uh, let us move on. So tomorrow, uh, grade nine, tonight, after writing my homework, you can do your reading on gravitational force, weight, mass, and magnetic force. It's going to be nice. I, I, love, I love magnetic forces. And then um, if you still um, want to learn more, you can follow that link there. We've got extra resources. Then um, you can follow us on... Uh, www.africatingigs.co.za or at Africa Teen Gigs in, or at Africa Teen Gigs at Azura at DBSA, Sasol Foundation at Sasol SA or hashtag STEM Champions. You can also find me on Instagram at XKIM or at tweet, on Twitter at MbataX. I love you so much. If you've got any questions, we can continue the conversation on those social medias. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Feather. I see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, sir. Bye. <laughs>